I think my sound is working. If it's not, let me know. <clears throat> I'm going to double check it just to be sure. <clears throat> but um, you let me know if you can't hear me. And I'm <clears throat> so I'm not making these today. I'm making the peanut butter cookies. But I wanted to show you these because I made these yesterday. And these are Chef AJ's peanut butter cookies, or um, pe Goodman peanut chews, sorry. And <clears throat> they're really good. And I'm going to take them to a chef's meeting because do you think that it would be safe to have all these around your house and, and not eat them? So I don't think I want to have all these Goodman peanut chews around. So I'm going to set these aside and talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. If anybody comes on, leave me a comment so I'll know that everything's working okay. And I'm trying to find, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm kind of new at this, uh, this eCam, so I always have to check on everything. Okay, it looks like my sound is working, so that's not an issue, so I'm going to put the comments back on. <clears throat> okay, hi Kelly. Kelly, can you hear me okay? Uh, let me know, and uh, then we'll get on with it. <clears throat> okay, she gave me a thumbs up, so here we go. So I wanted to make something out of a cookbook called Simply Sweet, and <clears throat> this cookbook is by, um, I can't remember her name, Amanda Sick. That's just, you know, Sick, that's her name, but she wrote a book on, um, hey Karen, yeah, these are the Chef AJ's Goodman Peanut Chews. They're really good, oh my goodness. They're so rich though. So I have a, a Texas Chefs Association meeting on Monday and I'm gonna bring these. I have them in the refrigerator covered up. So they should be good to go. But anyway, um, <clears throat> Amanda Six book called Simply Sweet it is all gluten-free desserts and things. And there's some really good stuff in there. Hi Lydia. Okay, everybody can hear fine. Good morning. Uh, what was wrong yesterday is my microphone the battery, I checked it right before I went on, and it was fine. And then it, it, it was dead, apparently. As soon as I turned it on, it went dead. So glitches, you just never know. I printed out the table of contents for Amanda's book, Simply Sweet. And it's, it's actually one of the first things in the bundle because it was alphabetized Amanda. So um, I was looking at it, and what caught my eye was, a lot of things caught my eye, but... I was really attracted to the peanut butter chocolate chunk cookies because I love to make cookies. And um, I think gluten-free things, hi Jackie, Ruth, good morning. Uh, I think gluten-free things are really popular because people always ask me whenever I post anything that's not gluten-free is they want to know what's the gluten-free version of it. So I'm trying to do better on, on getting gluten-free stuff. But in her book, she has pancakes, muffins, fudge, fudge, and bars. She has something called Twix bars. Do you ever remember eating a Twix bar? Pretty good, huh? Um, <clears throat> some raw things like raw carrot cake bars, some no-bake things, a bunch of different balls. Uh, she calls them bliss balls, coconut snowballs, um, no-bake brownie bites, and granola bars, cheesecakes, a bunch of cheesecakes, which I thought was pretty interesting because I never think about making a cheesecake. Um, <clears throat> Kelly said, I just bought the bum bundle from your link. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, I'm going to put the, the bundle link here in this. I, I forgot I was going to do that, but I'll do it right now. That way you can find it during my live stream because otherwise I might not get around to getting it on here. So when you go to the bundle link, what's really nice is it also will um, tell, give you a list of everything in the bundle. I mean, a complete list. Okay, here we go. It's hard for me to talk and do stuff at the same time. Okay, I think it's on there. Return. Okay, there it goes. So um, <clears throat> the bundle link is in the comments, so scroll through the comments. And when you go there, 
it will um, give you a list of everything in the bundle, all the books, the author, the picture, or the cover. So that way you don't have to buy it. You can look at it and say, huh, well, I don't know, this too much stuff, I don't like it. And then you can make up your mind. But, um, you know, if you like it, get it. Because for one thing, my, um, my new ebook, Plant-Based Japanese 2, is in it. And the, the ebook and the two videos is worth, I said it was valued at $45. Because, you know, my classes are $25 now and two videos, you know, that's like another class. So if you were just going to buy my ebook anyway, then if you bought it, you could get everything, 150 things, for the price of my one ebook. So why not? You know, it's, to me, it's, it's like a, a bargain. And the way I look at those things is if I pick and choose a few things out of it, then I'll be happy. Like I wrote down my top 10 and I, I talked about that yesterday, <clears throat> and I went through, I looked at everything in the bundle. I really did. I honestly looked at every single thing, and that took days. It took like four days to really look at everything, not just look at the cover, but look at each offering and read some stuff and look at some recipes, because that's how I picked the recipes I'm going to cook, because I had to look at them. And I was really impressed, but there's no way I'm going to go and download 150 things or look at 150 things again. Um, so, you know, pick and choose what you want. Uh, I was really tickled this morning because uh, I'm on, gonna be on Kathy Hester's show later in the week. And Kathy Hester told me that she printed out my Plant-Based Japanese 2 ebook, which I did too, I always print out my ebooks because it's easy for me to find the recipes and I use my own recipes. And I, I thought, Kathy Hester printed out my ebook, and she's a famous author. She, I have all her cookbooks, and she's been around for a long time in this space, way before me. And so, for her to think that my recipes were worthy of her printing them out, I was kind of like, "Oh, that's great." I, I feel like I've I've kind of arrived a little bit to know that that uh, somebody well known like that likes my stuff. So anyway, I, I pick and choose what I like. I have my top ten. And somebody asked me if I would publish a list of my top 10 favorite recipes. Uh, Kelly said, I met you at the NHA conference last year on the Vitamix tour. You told me about your new ebook and I've been waiting for it. Oh, that's so nice, Kelly. I remember you. Yes, um, I'm not going to NHA this year, National Health Association conference, but it was really cool to meet people in person. Okay, well, I know some of you want to see me make cookies, so let me quit talking constantly and make the cookies. And um, I have my green tea handy, so I'm going to be drinking it. Oh. How many of you drink green tea? You know, you can get decaf green tea, so you get all the benefits of the tea without the caffeine. And, um, you know, the reason I don't drink caffeine is whenever I experiment and I drink something with caffeine in it, and then I take my blood pressure my blood pressure has gone up about 20 points. So I've just realized that I don't know why, but I cannot handle caffeine anymore. So I just, I just don't worry about it. Okay, so we're gonna make Amanda Six peanut butter chocolate chunk cookies. And you can print stuff out from the bundle. You know, you don't have to just have electronic things. That's what people say, oh, I don't want all those eBooks. Well, pick a few things you really like. Oh, there's a pretty bluebird right here you probably can't see it well it flew away we have a lot of bluebirds coming around so keep an eye out my window i have a lot of trees and i have a, i actually have a bird feeder right over here but you can't see it um but yeah i actually if i find something i really like i'll just print it out and it's not that hard you know I, well i have a, a good printer but you know i'm because i'm i'm from kind of the old school uh, let's see, Lydia says, your ebooks are a favorite part of the bundles. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I've had uh, quite a few people message me and comment that they really liked my Japanese ebook. So I was really tickled because, you know, um, I, I dedicate all these things to my mother because my mother, my Japanese mother, because she's the one that, that you know, taught me about Japanese food. You know, I, I lived in Japan because of her. I, I was in the Air Force, and that was my number one choice of places to live in the world was Japan so I could meet my relatives. 
And so everything I do that's Japanese, I owe to her. So whenever you like her Japanese stuff, even though I've modified it to be plant-based, I really enjoy that. I need a whisk. Okay, so these um, gluten-free chocolate peanut butter cookies are like regular cookies, except I'm using oat flour. And I can't give you the exact recipe because it's in the ebook, and I can't give out her recipe, but I, you can watch me make it. So that's a cup and a half of uh, oat flour, and then it's going to use just good old baking soda, baking powder, sorry, baking powder, not soda teaspoon of that. That's pretty typical in cookies. And she says a pinch of salt. A uh, pinch of salt isn't super accurate, so I will use a pinch. And that's probably like an eighth of a teaspoon, I think. Maybe a little bit more. Um, and then, these are the dry ingredients. So in a lot of recipes, you whisk the dry ingredients. All right, I love your comments. So I can, I can multitask. I can look at your comments. I can wa monitor what I'm doing. And I can look at the camera, I think, at the same time. I should be able to, but it's not easy. Okay, so I got this mixed up. Okay, so let's say that you didn't want this wearing my hair down. It's kind of hard. Um, Let's say that you didn't want to use oat flour because you don't have oat flour and you're not gluten-free. Well, you could use any flour. You could use almond flour, whole wheat pastry flour, whole wheat flour. Any flour will work. Now, I like to combine um, whole wheat pastry flour with almond flour because I like the way almond flour tastes. So think about that. Think about getting some almond flour and a little bit of your other flour because then that gives it kind of that nuttiness. Of course, it increases the richness of it. So some of you may not be in favor of that. I need another bowl. Should have been a little bit better prepared for this. <clears throat> okay, I got another bowl right over here. All right. Um, so now the wet ingredients. Now she's using a half a cup of peanut butter. That's a lot of peanut butter. So let me get my cup. But that's what we're going to use. And uh, my dogs love it. Whenever I make anything with peanut butter, they smell it from the other side of the house and they come running. Well, the puppy has never tasted peanut butter. So this morning when I was mixing the peanut butter, here comes the two dogs, uh, Cammy and Jiro, and I give them a, a little spoon with peanut butter. And then here comes Toshi, and he's like, what's that smell? And he starts licking their mouths, like maybe he can get some of it. So I gave him a little lick of peanut butter, so he likes it now too. This is chunky peanut butter, and it's very liquid, but I've already mixed it up, but it's still kind of liquid. It's just this brand tends to be, at room temperature, it tends to be really kind of soft like that. But it's really a good brand of peanut butter. They sell it, I don't think they sell it everywhere but they sell it at the gourmet grocery store. It's called Nut and Better. Nut and Better, and it's only peanuts and a little sea salt. But, you know, not all peanut butters taste that good to me. And this one, I always have a lot of this around just because I like it. And then um, it uses uh, a fourth of a cup of maple syrup. So I've got maple syrup here, pure maple syrup, not the fake stuff. <sighs> so how many of you already have the bundle? Put in the comments something that you found in the bundle that you liked so far, if there's anything besides my ebook. Of course, I know you all like that, right? But something that you found, maybe that you didn't expect to find in it that you like. Okay, so I got the maple syrup and then she says a fourth of a cup of coconut sugar. Well, I don't have any coconut sugar. It's not something I use, but I do. I have replaced all kinds of sugar with date sugar now. It's just, oh, I guess I haven't opened this one. It's just something I prefer. So I'm gonna use my date sugar. And it, you know, to me, now that I've gotten used to it, I like the way it tastes well enough. So I don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything. Because, you know, dates are the preferred sweetener for the whole food plant-based lifestyle. Now, I did use maple syrup, and uh, I could have used date syrup, but 
since that's her recipe, I use the maple syrup because that's what she uses. But it, in my own recipes, I tend to convert everything to date sugar and date syrup just because I like that. Oh, I see some other people. Um, Lydia, uh, Lori says, my dog loves peanut butter. <clears throat> Jay Stoken says, I bought it. I liked yours the best. Oh, Dr. McDougall's course. Yeah, you know, there's some real values in there. There's a whole course in there. Okay, two tablespoons of water. I've already got that measured out. Uh, let's see. Oh, a teaspoon of vanilla. I forgot the vanilla. Too bad my husband's not sitting in this room. Because, one teaspoon of vanilla. Because if my husband was sitting here, I could just yell at him, but I'm going to go get the vanilla. <clears throat> oh, the baby. Sorry about that. <clears throat> when my husband's, uh, he's there when I'm doing my Zoom classes, so I can always get him to go get stuff I forget. It's been crazy. I, I don't know. This bundle thing is insane. Okay, Rebecca. Uh, Karen says, I haven't started to download it yet. <clears throat> Um, purchase the bundle and love everything you write and love Broccoli Mom Indian book. Yeah, that, thank you, Rebecca. That Broccoli Mom's Indian book is very extensive. And um, she has an Indian friend, and they collaborated and developed this book. And they did a really good job, I think. I, I looked through it. <clears throat> Indian food is something that a lot of people don't know how to make because it's not something you've made throughout your life. It's just not something that, you know, you think about making. Oh, I'm going to add another ingredient. I'm going to add some roasted whole brown rice powder. It's like a coffee flavor. Just because it makes cookies taste really good. And I've just added it to them, and I want to find different ways to use this. It's from the company Same S. E, let's see, how do they pronounce, how do they spell it? S-E-I-M-E-E, -E -E, and they're in the bundle. They have a bunch of recipes in the bundle. And I'm going to be making something of theirs this week. I can't remember what, but I'm going to be making something from them. <clears throat> I'm going to use about a half a teaspoon, half of this teaspoon of the brown rice powder. And that will add some richness. Maybe, maybe I'll use a little more. That doesn't look like it would do anything. Okay, about a teaspoon. So if you keep this around, you can use it in your baked goods. It's a, you can make a cup of, of uh, coffee with it. Let's see, husbands are the best kitchen assistants. Yeah, yeah, my husband's great at that. He helps me with all my classes. Well, he, he monitors the, the chat on the, on the Zoom classes. Okay, so I'm gonna mix it again and always I always mix my dry ingredients with a, a good whisk. In the old days, we used to sift them in a sifter. I don't think anybody uses sifters much anymore. Okay, then always we mix the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients. I'm going to put the wet ones in because this bowl is too small. Usually I add the dry to the wet. I don't think it really matters as long as you mix them. And then we just have to combine these before we add the chocolate. So, because it's oat flour, we don't have to worry too much about overmixing. Because in regular flour, I always tell people, don't overmix because you'll end up forming a lot of gluten. And then your cookies will be tough. But I don't think it really matters with this. So we just have to mix it together until we get our cookie dough. And... Okay, so you got Indian food from Broccoli Mom, Mum, and <clears throat> oh, um, Jack says your book and the medical tests at your recommendation. Yeah, there's a book called Labs by Dr. Marbus and Brittany Giruti that has recipes as well. But in that book, <clears throat> they go through and they talk about all the different medical tests that are recommended and the values and what we should be looking for and what we should be aiming for. So even though your doctor may tell you that it's normal to have um, cholesterol of 200, then <clears throat> in their comments they'll say, yes, 
Your doctor may say that's normal, but it's not optimal. The optimal <clears throat> amount is 150 for being heart attack proof. I'm looking for my scoop, but I don't see it. Okay, so I've got the, the batter, and then I have my chocolate chunks, and I, I buy these El Rey chocolates. And the El Rey chocolates, they come in these discs. So they're, they're thin, but they're kind of wide. They're not chips. So then this is chocolate chunk, chunk. These are chunks, peanut butter cookies. So I'm going to just put the whole disc in here. Usually I cut them up with a knife. And if you're interested in getting El Rey chocolates, I always post the link to that on my chef page. But what I'll do is I'll post a picture of these cookies after they're made. And I'll put the link to the El Rey store where I get the chocolate. <clears throat> the chocolate's El Rey. It's in Stonewall, Texas. It's a family-owned store that sells the El Rey chocolates that are from Venezuela. And I usually order them online, and there is kind of a shipping cost because they're, you know, they have to pack them specially. But it's not. It's about five hours from where I live. So last summer. <clears throat> uh, my husband and I took a trip to Fredericksburg, and um, they knew we were coming. I told them we were coming. And so the owners of that store where I always buy the chocolates have told me before that they get tons of orders from people around the country online because of my cooking, because people will say, oh, Chef Julia made such and such a chocolate thing, so I want to order the chocolate she uses. In this case, I use the 75%, 73.5% chocolate. And so they'll know a special kind of chocolate. And then, um, so they, they had been in touch with me and they asked if they could uh, put a picture of me on their wall. So that, you know, saying that, um, you know, Chef Julia uses El Rey chocolate. So that was kind of cool. So they did, they put a picture of me on their wall. And then um, when I went down there, I did a cooking demo for them and made a plant-based no oil chocolate thing for them and you know they said it was really good and they liked it and a lot of people came it was a packed room full of people so that was kind of cool all right so let's measure these out I've got my parchment lined sheet I've got the oven at 350 and I'm going to make them not quite a fourth of a cup so you know they're, they're about that much it's you know generous but not a fourth of a cup seems a little excessive and then I'm going to pat it down a little bit now, I've never made these before, so I don't know how they're going to turn out, but I have made a lot of cookies. You know me. I make a ton of cookies. These seem very peanut buttery, which is good because, you know, peanut butter cookies are popular. And, you know, peanut butter and chocolate is popular. So guess what I'm going to do with these cookies? They are going to the Texas Chefs Association. <laughs> Maybe some of them, not all of them. Because remember, I don't know if you, you were on in the beginning, I have these beautiful Goodman peanut chews <laughs> from Chef AJ's recipe in the bundle. Um, I am not keeping these here. They are too addictive. So if you make these, they look beautiful and they'd be a good thing to take to a potluck or something. Or if you have really good willpower, you can keep them in your freezer, I guess. But I'm afraid if I had those in my freezer, they would, they would uh, find their way into my mouth. And so you know how Chef AJ always says, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm coming up on turning 70 in June. And so for my 70th birthday, I wanted to be in really good shape. So as part of that, <clears throat> I've been lifting weights extra hard at, with my trainer. And I have been, um, you know, trying to really get, stay at my goal weight, which I usually stay at. But then if I travel and do stuff, sometimes I've gotten a little sloppy with my vegan oil food, you know, and gone on a trip and eaten too much rich food and come back and just didn't feel very good about, you know, gaining a couple pounds. So I don't want to do that anymore. I'm trying to find ways to stick with this when I'm out of town better than I've been doing. Oh, and by the way, there is, a, there is a book in the bundle called The Eights, and it's by 
Joya, what's her last name? Um, Joya Wesley. And she wrote a book called Easy Breezy Vegan. And I ordered it because she was on Chef AJ a while back. And she writes a book called The Easy Breezy Eights. And it's like eight tips for when you travel. And, um, you know, she's very strict with her eating because apparently she had a health scare. And she said that she went through her, her um, whole food plant-based thing, lost all her weight, and she was doing really well. But then she started gaining it back because she got, did what I did, you know, sometimes, gone somewhere to a restaurant, ate too much vegan food, you know, just overdid it. And so she, um, <clears throat> she said she would, she started following bright line eating to get her weight off and to keep it off. Well, I know some of you are probably familiar with bright line eating. This dough is really nice. You can handle it with your hands and it doesn't stick to your hands. It's really kind of easy to work with. It's, you know, I'm not having to do much with it. I'm just forming it into a kind of a ball and then pressing it down on my sheet here. And they all, you know, I can, uh, it's, they're kind of like Play-Doh. They, they uh, work together really well. So anyway, she followed Bright Line Eating and I guess got her extra weight off and she's really strict about never straying away from her plant-based stuff. And so she travels a lot for her work. She um, apparently travels with musicians or something like that. And she's gone on the road a lot. So she has a lot of opportunities to not, you know, eat well if she's not super prepared. So in her ebook, she talks about how she manages to stay 100% compliant when she's traveling. And I found that really helpful because while I may never be 100% compliant traveling, I've got some extra dough, not enough to make a cookie, so I'm taking extra chocolate pieces and I'm putting them on top of the cookies I've already got formed because that will look good in the final cookie to have melty chocolate on the top, right? And then I got one little piece of dough I'm just going to stick it somewhere. Don't want to waste it. I'll just kind of do a little surgery and add it to a couple of the skimpier looking ones. But um, Joya Wesley, she had um, links to her products on her ebook. And I, one of them is really cool. I have to wash my hands now. One of her things is really cool. It's a, it's a rice cooker, silicone rice cooker steamer pot. And I like it because it's really compact. It's like it compacts into something about this deep and about that wide, like eight inches round. And it fits in a box. And then it, you pull it up and it turns into a pot. And then it has a like a, a steaming tray in it. So I, I messed around with, I had one, I bought one when her first book came out. Oh, here, let me put these in the oven. It says 13 minutes, and I want you to see them. I use chunky peanut butter. So you can see these little cool little peanut chunks. They look so awesome. And then my big chocolate chunks. So I'm going to get these in the oven. It says 13 minutes, but I'm going to say 12 minutes. Ah. This is different from my other oven. There we go. My other oven's different. So I always put less time than whatever the recipe says. If it says 14 minutes, I'll put 12 minutes because a lot of times it's overcooked if you use the thing. Uh, Jack says, I love your live presentations. Well, thank you, Jackie. Uh, I have not been doing this because I have this new program that I'm not that familiar with called Ecamm. As you can see, I wasn't very good at it. But I've got it set up now, and I even figured out how to set up another camera. This is a phone, but I can set up another camera on top of what I'm cooking so that I can switch back and forth between this camera and that camera. So I'm getting better. And so I'm thinking that 
uh, I think people would like it if I went live like daily and did kind of a here's what I'm eating, not, not bundle related, I mean after this bundle thing is all over with, but doing a what I'm eating today video in the mornings and show you like here's my whole day of food. Like for example today I'm going to make, as soon as I get done with this, and I'll make it while I'm still on camera so you can see it, I'm going to make a smoothie from one of the bundle contributors. And um, it's a called, uh, uh, it was called uh, Fruity Eva Smoothie Book. So I'm going to make her smoothie. And I'll just make it on camera. Why not? So, uh, but yeah, what do you all think? And put it in the comments here. Would you watch me if I did this on this format where it goes to YouTube, Facebook? Uh, yeah, it goes to Facebook and all my YouTube, all my Facebook pages and my YouTube channel in this format. Would you watch something like that? Is that something you would watch? I know I would, not for, watch me, but there used to be uh, a woman called Butterfly Effect, plant-based, and she, uh, I can't remember her name, Heather, Heather Godwin, and when she was on uh, Chef AJ's program, she would go live every day and show what she was taking to work, and she would be in her kitchen, and she would make stuff in her microwave, and saying I got these vegetables and these potatoes and I was starting out back then I was kind of new to the whole plant-based thing and I loved watching her and it wasn't fancy she didn't have a lot of technology going she didn't have a bunch of pop-up things and I'm never going to do that because that's not my style it was just her talking into the camera saying hey everybody um, I'm getting ready for work, and she would get close to the camera, not, you know, not far away, and she would say, I'm getting ready for work, and today I'm going to make these grains with this and whatever, and uh, I liked watching that, I, and I love watching Kathy Hester's live streams where she just has people come into her kitchen, and she's just chatting about, oh, you know, we're doing this, and we're doing that, and I watch all that kind of stuff, so... You know, I think, well, you know, I could do that if anybody would watch it. And actually, I shouldn't care if anybody watches it or not. It, you know, I should just do things because they're good things to do. And if somebody happens to watch it, great. Uh, and that's kind of how I want to live my life and not worry about whether something's right or wrong. Because, you know, like I keep saying, I'm trying to make changes in this year of turning 70. But please... Uh, yes, please, but two, two hour long a video. Uh, Marion, I'm not sure what you're saying. Two hour long a video? You want it to be for two hours? Or you don't want it to be too long? Tell me what you mean. I'm thinking the video would be, uh, it probably would be less than an hour, you know. 30 to 45 minutes, it depends if I have a lot of stuff going on. And then the other thing that I have to think about is when I make my videos, first of all, you know, um, I can't just go on the camera with no makeup and messy hair because I'm too, I'm at an age in my life where I don't think that's a very good look and I am not going to go public looking, not looking my best. So I would have to come back from my five mile walk. Uh, sorry, not too long. Okay, Marion, I got it. Um, I would have to come back from my five mile walk where my hair is all flattened on my head, fix my hair, put on a little bit of makeup, uh, you know, get into the right mindset to do it. And that's very time consuming. So, uh, you know, those things, it's not just like you walk in your room and start talking on the camera. You have to set everything up. You have to set up your food. 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, I got it. I could do that. Today is going to be a little bit longer because I'm going to make more than one thing. After the cookies are done, I'll make the smoothie. In fact, I'll start making the smoothie now. So anyway, <clears throat> the bundle recipe that I made was the chocolate, peanut chocolate, peanut butter chocolate chunk cookies. And the other, and that was from Amanda Sick. Uh, simply sweet ebook and the other ebook I've been trying to make daily recipes from is called um, smoothies by fruity Eva and in her smoothie this one she has a banana actually she has a frozen banana 
and a regular banana. So I need to go run and get a frozen banana. I couldn't get it out early because obviously. So I'm going to run and get my frozen banana. I'll be right back. My freezer's in the other room. Oh, thank you. Dad can bring you in to say hi, but I'm not going to let you stay. I needed to get a rack for the cookies, too. I don't like videos that are too long, either. Can't watch Kathy Hester because of that. <laughs> yeah, I know, sometimes. I can only watch her if I'm going to be out in about a long time, and I have plenty of time. Okay, so I've got my frozen banana and a fresh banana. I've got two cups of strawberries. And I'm going to put them in with the stems and all because, you know, they're greens, right? They're not going to hurt anything. Let me see how our cookies are looking. Oh, man, they look so good. And then I have a sumo citrus. She calls for a mango, but I don't have any mangoes. I'd have to go to the store, so it's not. I can, you can substitute any fruit. And then a half a cup of water. So this is going to be my morning smoothie. Hey, oh, here comes Steve. Maybe I can get him to bring me a glass. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is from the smoothie ebook in the bundle. I've got the cookies in the oven. And then later today, I'm going to be making, I'm going to do a YouTube video, not a live stream. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Would you bring me one of my smoothie glasses, mm -hmm. those tall glasses? And then when you come back, I'll get him. Aren't you the No, I'm good. Here's the baby. He came to say hi. Little I can't leave him in here because yesterday, oh, yes, sweet boy. I left him in here, and he was over there in the corner, and my husband was in the next room, and the puppy was... He was trying to find electrical cords. He got my um, expensive wooden bowls from Vermont that I paid a fortune for. He was making a mess. Okay, say bye. Yeah. Huh? You paid? Huh? You paid a fortune? Oh, uh, Steve paid a fortune <laughs> for him. <laughs> yeah, he always buys me these expensive uh, Andrew Pierce Vermont bowls every time we go to Vermont. And they're so beautiful. If you ever look in my photos, you'll see them. Okay, so I've got my smoothie ingredients, and I'm going to see if there's any other questions. Less than an hour, less than an hour. Okay, I got, I got it. I'm going to put this in my blender. So, um... seconds. Okay, so this is not my normal smoothie. Let's look at it. Oh, wow, look at that. Such a pretty color. And I have extra, so I'll give that to Steve. He won't turn that down. Oh, I have my smoothie straws. Hmm, wow. That has a real strong strawberry taste. So I have some fresh, I like that, that's really good. I have a bunch of fresh berries because it was funny. I went to my I went to my gourmet supermarket where I get a lot of stuff and I came home and I told Steve, I said, Steve, a pint of blueberries was $7.99. And I said, all oh, the fruit was so expensive. I said, I didn't even buy anything. I bought some one pint of raspberries and they were $6. So I told him, I said, if you're ever shopping and you see any 
berries that don't cost a lot, get me some, especially strawberries, because the ones at that market were like $7.99 and they didn't look good. So he came home yesterday and he had three packages of raspberries and a big container of strawberries. And he said, oh yeah, the strawberries were $5.99 and it wasn't that much cheaper. And the raspberries were like $6, they were about the same. But I didn't say anything, I said, oh, thank you. And he got them for me. I said, you like my little puppy dog? He's cute, isn't he? Okay, so this is good. Now, my normal smoothies, we still have another minute to wait, so I'll talk through that. My normal smoothies, I know those of you who follow me, I put a lot of stuff in my smoothies, and I keep the tray over here by my, my uh, Vitamix blender. So I have pumpkin seed, protein powder, goji berries, chia seeds, amla, gooseberry, Powder. I've got my pepper, ginger, turmeric. Now I have cranberry powder and barberries, which are good for blood pressure. And I have my <clears throat> flax seed in the little fridge right here. Okay, so this is done. Let me open the oven. So, oh look, look how much they've, how big they've gotten. And how do we know if they're right? Oops. We just kind of lift them up. I think they're good. They might could use another minute. So I'm going to give them another minute. When I lifted that one up, it split in half. <laughs> that will be, we'll give that to Steve as the tester. Oops. I don't know why my oven does that. Okay, timer. One. There we go. I'm going to do it for one more minute because it seemed like they weren't very... They didn't have a lot of color on the bottom. So yeah, uh, normally I have my smoothies with all those smoothie ingredients handy and flaxseed in the fridge. And then I put a little ice in mine. This one didn't have ice in it. I think I would add a little ice. And I might add a date. So um, strawberries, I had an, uh, an orange. I might add a date to it just because I like a little more sweetness. The strawberries weren't the sweetest, but it's still, it's very good, enjoyable. I'm not complaining. But I thought um, there's a couple of smoothie books in the bundle. Another one is called, I think it's called Smoothies and Spice. And I'm gonna be making something out of that one. I'm gonna make a smoothie a day during bundle week, bundle 10 days, whatever it is. And um, I thought, well, because I, I make smoothies every day, so I'll make a, somebody else's smoothie and test it. Okay, here's our cookies. All right, yeah, that looks a little better. It's got a little more color to it. So that's good. I like that. And let me turn this oven off because it makes so much noise. Okay, so when you make cookies, always let them sit out on your baking sheet for a few minutes, like five minutes before you transfer them to a rack because if you don't, just like what happened when I did it, is the cookie started to fall apart because it didn't have time to really set up. So we'll, I'll wait a few minutes and I'll talk, talk a little bit more. So uh, <clears throat> I will be doing my video this afternoon. It'll be a recorded video on the miso soup balls. And the miso soup balls, I did this, I've done it a couple times, but I improved on my recipe and so I put it in my new ebook here. And what I like about it is, and it's funny, I hadn't even planned to do this because I didn't even think of it. And last night I had Japanese food for dinner. I had rice, tofu, and I got one of these out of the freezer from when I made it back in December. And it was in a silicone container and um, it was a miso soup ball and it had tofu in it and everything and I put it in a, a pan. I'm going to see if I have any more of those containers available. No, I think that's the only one I have. Um, but uh, I put it in a little cooking saucepan and I added, oh, my necklace is all messed up. I added um, one cup of water and you can't add more because if you try to put too much water in it because you think, oh, it needs more water, it's not very big it will dilute it too much. So you have to be careful to only put a cup of water in with your miso soup ball. And then I had this 
lovely bowl of miso soup to go with my rice and my tofu. My rice was frozen in a little bag in the uh, brown rice in the freezer where I always keep a bunch of single serving sizes of brown rice. My tofu was the same way. It was a little bag of one serving of sesame ginger tofu that I had made. Who knows when? It was just in there with all my other stuff. So without having to do any planning or prep, I had miso soup, rice, tofu, and then I had salad because I don't know if you saw my um, reel and little video about eat more salad where I started putting all my salad ingredients in like a big tub all together like piled up cabbage, carrots, bell peppers, and you know anything else I decide I want to put in my salad. Then I have a red onion and tomatoes. And so I always have those things in one tub and then I just get that out and I can take a handful of each thing, throw it in a bowl with spring mix and I have a salad. And then I have, um, I had frozen dressing in the little containers in the freezer. I had some Japanese dressing, which is in this ebook too, that I had labeled and saved in little two ounce portion cups. So I defrosted that. And so even my salad dressing came out of the freezer. So that's an example of a truly 10 minute meal of everything I already had made that was frozen and I just threw it all together except for the salad. So for so super busy people, the plant-based way of eating can work very well. You don't have to be a, a, you know, hanging out in the kitchen all the time to make plant-based food that tastes good. You know, you can be somebody who is um, like me. I'm this, this uh, bundle week is super busy. And I don't have time to do a lot of cooking because I'm doing all these recipe demos. Let's see. Okay, so now it's firmed up enough that we can move it to our tray. And look how pretty they look. Do you, what do you all think? Do you think these are pretty cookies? They're, you see the chocolate chunk? And look how the bottom is brown. That's why I left it in another minute because it didn't have that a minute before. So sometimes just a minute can make a big difference. And um, the cookies that you can see, the little pieces of peanut butter in some of them. And then they smell amazing. And they're gluten-free. And here's the one that broke in half. So that will be the one we test. So let's take a bite of this. It's hot. Cookies don't usually taste good hot. Hmm. Well, it tastes, <laughs> it tastes like a peanut butter cookie, obviously. It's very peanut buttery. So, hmm. I think as it cools off, it will firm up a little bit more. Right now, it's really way too soft to tell, but it's very good. So again, and not too sweet because it has just a fourth of a cup of maple syrup. And I did put the date, a fourth of a cup of uh, date sugar. She called for coconut sugar. So if, you're, um, if you've got the bundle, this is under Amanda Sick, Simply Sweet Gluten-Free Desserts. Give this recipe a try. And I will post a picture of it after I get done. And I will have a link to the El Rey chocolates in case you want to buy those chocolates. Now, there's a bunch of... of um, low sugar, no sugar chocolates that you can buy. Everybody's advertising them now, so you don't have to get the ones I use. The ones I use are 73.5% chocolate, and that means they do have an amount of sugar. So they're not really sweet, but they're, they have a really good taste because the chocolate is very pure and they're, it's vegan. I've tried a lot of other chocolates, and some people um, say anywhere, you know, they, they find other kinds of chocolate. So Laura says, is there a list anywhere of which recipes you have in the bundle? Yes, my recipes in the bundle are in this one ebook called Plant-Based Japanese 2. So those, that's all my recipes are in this one bundle, in this one ebook. And when you open it up on the, on the bundle, it will also have links to two videos. And there are YouTube videos that I filmed that are for things in this ebook. Um, they're for things called hot pots, donabe cooking, which is a little different. So I made two videos to show people that. And there's a, a 
There's an onigiri video, which I'm making Japanese rice balls. So that comes with it. But yeah, those are all my recipes. And then um, be sure, and if you, if you want to, <clears throat> watch um, Chef AJ tomorrow at uh, 4 o'clock Central Time. It's 2 o'clock Pacific Time. That's probably hmm, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, I think. And I'm going to be on for 30 minutes uh, talking about my plant-based Japanese 2 ebook, and I'll be making a recipe of the rice balls onigiri on Chef AJ's show. So I think it's going to be fun. It would be really cool. Um, oh, Rebecca says that's great info about videos. Thank you. So I think, um, and yeah, the video is total, like a total of almost two hours with, between both of them. So they're, they're, they're good. They're good teaching videos. So yeah, if you're watching Chef AJ tomorrow and make comments because I noticed that when people are on there and their, their followers and supporters come on there and say, you know, oh, we follow you. Thank you for what you do or whatever. Then she notices that. And I think it makes it even a better show. So if you're inclined to do that, you know, come on there and, and uh, say that you're watching and then I'll know you're watching too. Cause I'll go back later and look at all the comments. So I'm excited about being on her show. And every day during the bundle until March the 10th, I'm gonna go live. I think I'm gonna go live at nine o'clock every morning because that seems to be working out. Uh, and, and do some kind of recipe. Lydia says, see you on Chef AJ. Okay, Lydia, thank you. I'll probably go not live at nine o'clock or close to it because that way people can get used to me coming on at the same time. Yeah, they're starting to firm up. Hmm, yes. Hmm, hmm, that chocolate. I haven't eaten breakfast. I need to eat breakfast so I don't start eating these cookies. <laughs> but yeah, um, what I'll do mor Monday, uh, morning, every morning at nine o'clock, I'll, I'll do a live stream and I'll make something from the bundle. I'll make a recipe. It might be mine, it might be somebody else's, but I'll make some kind of live recipe and talk about any updates or anything. And then I'll do, I'm going to do a regular video, like a recorded video for my YouTube channel because I like to have these recorded videos on my YouTube channel of me making dishes from my ebook. That way they're always there. So that way, like this afternoon, I'm going to make the miso soup balls because people will be interested in that long after the bundle and then I can refer them to that, that um, video on YouTube because nobody's going to want to come back after the bundle and watch these long live streams about the bundle and whatever because they're boring. I'm sorry, but once it's over, nobody wants to hear about it again, right? Okay, so everybody make some cookies. Any questions or comments? Anything that you saw, I got flour on me, anything that you saw out of the bundle that you want me to make, I mean out of the uh, my ebook, uh, Becca says I'll watch you on Chef AJ as well, thank you so much. I, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this, uh, this ecam because I could see your comments easily, they're in big print so I can I can um, talk to you, see your comments at the same time, and I kind of have learned how to use it finally. So maybe I'll just keep doing these. They're, they're not so bad. It's, it's hard for me sometimes to, um, you know, get used to new stuff because, you know, it's a little stressful. So I'm working on getting better at it, but everything is a, it's kind of a learning curve. Enjoy those precious pups. Looking forward to the miso balls. Great. Um, I'll bring the puppies on whenever I can. And also remember, uh, Chef AJ's Goodman peanut chews. If you feel like making those, those are going to be a big hit when I take them to the chef's meeting. I will take the cookies to the chef's meeting. I might keep a couple, but I'll take the rest. And then um, the smoothie. I made the smoothie today. So the um, <clears throat> smoothie book by... Fruity Eva is the one I've been making. And yesterday I made the green sunshine smoothie. And I like that one a lot. It had spinach and bananas 
and um, oh, I put an orange in that one too because I don't have any mangoes, and that was good. Hmm, this is good too. All right, everybody. So, thank you for those of you who have purchased the bundle. Uh, if you come up with something on my ebook that you want me to prepare online and on live or on video, just uh, you know comment or send me a, a text me or a not text message, a message on Facebook or wherever, YouTube, and I'll try my best to make it. So off I go to clean up my mess and do a bunch more stuff. Oh, oh, another thing I forgot to tell you. Today at 2 o'clock Central Time, I'm going live with Rachel Detroit, and we're going to talk about, I think she called it defying aging and disease because, um, she has MS, but she's, her MS has been kind of put in remission or whatever you call MS. It's not affecting her now. And then my defying aging is about, you know, the fact that I'm turning 70 this year and uh, where is the recipe? I cannot publish the recipe for the cookies because it's part of the bundle. Um, so you, what you have to do is you have to purchase the bundle and the link is in the comments. And then you can get her recipe because I don't have her permission to publish her recipe. I can make it, but I can't really give you all the, the details. So, um, but anyway, <clears throat> two o'clock today, Central Time, watch me talk to Rachel about defying aging because, you know, one thing is when you get to a certain age, people start dismissing your the validity in life, I think sometimes it's subtle, but there really is kind of an ageism in our society where people will, you know, they'll speak negatively about older people. Uh, Lily Wong says, I will watch you on Chef AJ. Thank you. So I, I like to talk about that, like what, what is ageism and how can you recognize it so that you can stand up to it? Because that's what I do. If someone says something, like even my walking friends, one day they were talking about Oh, those old ladies, those old whatever, you know, and I'm like, well, how old are they? And they said, oh, you know, they're probably like 65 or something, and they were kind of real negative, and I said, well, you know, um, and my walking friends are like barely 60, early 60s, or, you know, they're young, well, way younger than me, and so I said, well, that's kind of a derogatory way to classify age by calling them old ladies. It's not because they're old that you don't like them, it's because of their behavior. You know, like I represent the age group of over 65 and now pretty soon I'm gonna be 70. And I do not like it when people say old hag, old woman, the elderly, because technically I'm elderly. Well, I don't identify with being elderly because I can out walk, I can out lift, I can out, you know, do stuff for younger people because I have a lot of energy from eating a healthy whole food plant-based diet. I don't have any health problems so I'm not feeble, which is another ageism where people say, oh, you know, um, I have all these aches and pains. It comes with being old or old age and I have to say, no, it doesn't. You can age and not have aches and pains or bad knees or bad, you know, back or whatever, not have osteoporosis, whatever, you know, a lot of that can be either helped or even prevented. And it certainly can be helped if you're at your ideal weight. So at my weight now, 100, between 140 and 143 pounds, I don't have any feet problems. I don't have swollen ankles. I don't get tired standing on my feet all day. I could stand on my feet for 16 hours and then finally I'll get a little tired. But I remember a time in my life when I was in my um, 30s when I was pregnant with my fourth child, and I was 240 pounds when I had her. That's 100 more pounds than I weigh now. Of course, I was pregnant, but you don't gain 100 pounds being pregnant. And <clears throat> uh, Karen says, I didn't join the senior center until I was 75 because I didn't identify as a senior. Yeah, exactly. I don't identify as a senior citizen. When I think of a senior citizen, I think of somebody who's you know, kind of 
walking around, you know, and whatever, you know, low energy, uh, talks real feeble, you know, doesn't feel good. I have a friend like that at, at one of the things I belong to, a, a board, and she and I are the exact same age, and she's always talking about, well, you know, at this age, I just don't have the energy to, to do that, and she doesn't have any health problems, really. And I'm looking at her going, it's not your age, it's your state of mind, it's your body's health, it's your activity level, it's your diet, it's everything. Because look at the Esselstyns. Mrs. Esselstyn is dragging tires around, and she's, what, you know, 88 years old? And Dr. Esselstyn is still going out riding his bicycle, and he turned 90. So they're not sitting around going, oh, well, you know, we're... We're so old, we're almost 90 years old, and we can't do anything. No, they're defying aging. So anyway, 2 o'clock, we're going to talk about that. If you come on, <clears throat> and you can comment about your definition of how you defy age. And I'm going to just, in my head, I have a whole list of ways that I'm defying aging. And I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can, following my healthy program. Let's see, how are these cookies now? they cooled. Mmm, they get better. Mmm, very good. So if you like peanut butter cookies and chocolate, make these. And gluten-free. All right, everybody, it's been an hour. I know you don't want to hear super long live stream, so I'm going to cut it off, and I'm going to go about my business and get a bunch of other stuff done today. Keep watching my social media, Instagram, Facebook, Share, share my stuff so that more people will know about the bundle. Because if you think about the bundle, it's basically 99% off. So if you <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> don't eat and talk and cookies get stuck in your mouth, hold on. So if you went shopping to a department store, and everything was 99% off, you'd probably buy it, right? So get the bundle. It's a good example. Uh, Rebecca says Anne is a great example. Yes, she is. Okay, everybody. I'll see you later today. Bye-bye.